As always, it is a pleasure to have you stopping by. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It is November 14th. Now we're going to do the same thing we do in all my shows. I'm going to share some due diligence with you on some hot OTC penny stocks. That is subjective. I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks, which can be found on any market, the major exchanges and the OTC. And I'm keeping my eyes open through the day for stocks that have potential that I can share with you. Now, most of the time when I find a hot penny stock, I'm looking at the charts. You can look at a lot of charts very quickly and very quickly tell if that chart has heat. You can see if there's volume coming in or breakout setup or big bounces or hot technicals. Well, when you find a chart that has heat, then take the time to go rustling around through all the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. If you find a hot catalyst, well, you've got a hot chart. With the two together, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you each day. So let's jump on into the first one. We're going to be getting most of our information over here at the otcmarkets.com website. You can use whatever site you like. I've just gotten very accustomed to this site. So we are looking at ticker YCRM, Ulings Ice Cream Corporation. This was a hot stock for a while. She was going to be doing a merger with Pickle Jar. Ulings Ice Cream came onto the market not too long ago, and the company's name is associated with beer and ice cream. But we don't see any of that here, and I really don't know why. Well, this deal with Pickle Jar came and went. They terminated the deal just last week. Well, it had the stock running. When the termination came in, it had the stock falling. Well, she is now bouncing back, and she's breaking out over the 200, and she's got a new deal on the table. That's why we're looking at Ulings Ice Cream Corporation again. So, Ulings finished today at 005 with over 50% gains, closer to 54. She is on the pink tier. She is current. She's only got one of those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. She's got transfer agent verified. That's an important one. So is the other one, verified profile. The reason I make such a big deal of these two green ticks, verified profile and transfer agent verified, is we're talking about a pink. Pinks have no validated information. Not even their financials are validated. Those are just numbers the management are handing off to them. You can't do any weighing up on the company. There's no fundamentals. So this is the only validated information you're going to get with the pink. That's why they're such a big deal. Now, just because they're not both there doesn't mean it's a deal breaker, but there is a lot more assurance seeing them there. Now, they tell us she's a shell risk. That means she's in business doing something, but she's not making any money. I don't know what her business is. I mean, <laughs> I know they make beer and ice cream using that name, but is this the same company? Why aren't those revenues over here? I just don't get it. So, what was the relative volume around you, Lings, today? Da, ah, what an increase, right? She jumped from 26 million up to over 100 million shares today on the OTC. Now, I'm going to refresh this page. I want to see how much share volume we had on the entire OTC market. Well, relatively speaking, that's not bad. 5 billion shares. I know it sounds like a lot, but two years ago, we were doing 70 billion shares a day before COVID and everything else came into play. Right now, we're lucky to be hitting 5 billion. We're closer to 1 to 3 billion a day. My point though, out of 12,300 different companies on the OTC who have to divvy up all those shares, this company got 102 <laughs> million of them. It is still getting activity after market. But here's the thing about these OTC stocks. You may see trading aftermarket or pre-market. That's not me or you or anybody else like us. It's not the retail investors. It is brokers and marketers behind the scenes. And I'm hoping, oh, the price came down. I was hoping the marketers and brokers would push the price up. But most of the time, they pull the price down. I don't know what their game is. Let's take a look at the share structure for u -Links. Well, that's a bit interesting. First thing that jumps out at me is that there's no restricted shares. These are the shares the management own. They don't own anything of this company. That's not just weird. That's a bit disturbing. 
Outstanding share count is about 350 million. And that's what the float is. Considering that the insiders don't own anything, we've got all the shares in the float. Market cap for the company is about 1.1 million. Looking at the financials, we're not gonna see anything over here because it's a shell risk company, meaning they're not making any revenues. I don't even really think they're in business. Now the revenues you see here, these are for the company that used to have this ticker. It's not this company. We got no revenues at the end of the year, no revenues on any of the quarters, just some expenses. Speaking of expenses, what's their balance sheet look like? Oh, well they got nothing in the bank. They've got 171,000 in assets. We know that's thousands and not just 100 because they tell us to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Total liabilities is 10 times the assets, 1.7 million. Now doing the math, the number would be different. So they've added something else here that was detrimental. And right now stockholder equity is a deficit of 1.9 million. So shareholders are holding about $2 million of debt. Disclosures, this is really the only information we have going for us. An 8K that came out yesterday. Now looking at the news, and I'm gonna come back to it, hold on. <laughs> looking at the news, the big news came out at the end of August that Ulings had announced that letter of intent to merge with the Texas-based music business software company, Pickle Jar. And then on the 9th of November, both companies got together and mutually agreed to terminate the merger. So that was it, right? The stock came plummeting down and it's gonna keep going. No, we've got another light at the end of the tunnel. Jumping into that filing, they tell us that on November 7th, 2023, Ulings Ice Cream Corporation entered into a share exchange agreement with Reach Out Technology Corporation, a Delaware company. Reach Out agreed to sell 100% of their company for exchange of shares in this company. And then they break it all down for you. And down here, they tell us what this company does. Reach Out is a managed service provider and a transformative force in cybersecurity and IT services, dedicated to serving small to medium sized businesses. Reach Out's goal is to become the premier cybersecurity and managed IT service company for North America by acquiring market share and standardized operations. And that's really all we got, folks. We don't have any numbers here for what the value is. We don't know if Reach Out's making any revenues right now. We don't have a date. All we've got is a new catalyst on the table for Ulings, another merger. And the chart is breaking out right now. But rather than just talk about it, let's go look at it. We're going to chart all these stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got it free from TD Ameritrade, but you might be able to get it from Schwab as well. They just did a merger not too long ago. So we're looking at Ulings Ice Cream, ticker YCRM. That's a one day, one year chart. It was all the way back in December, we had our 52 week high of about two and a half cents. And in May of this year, we hit our 52 week low of triple zero five. Coming down to our six month, four hour view. Off of that low bubble, she started to climb very slowly, working her way towards the 200. And once she got near it and on top of it, that was it. She wasn't negotiating, no bouncing on it, no going back underneath. She just took off and started running. Now we looked at it three days after she broke out. That was September 12th. The price we looked at was roughly 0 0.0035. Now let's get rid of all these zeros. Three, five. The high about four days ago was 0 0.023, call that 23. So we went from three and a half to 23. That is about 750% gains, folks. Then came out the bad news and she tumbled all the way down here right to where she started her run the last time. She actually put out a little wick right there and had to touch it and that's it. She didn't even come beneath it. She tagged it and she has bounced off of it, put herself over the 200 with a strong wick going through the next SMA, showing us her intentions. She did pull back, but she is still over the 200 at double zero five. Lots of volume coming into the picture again. Our oscillators, not real happy on the four hour chart. That was a lot of down pressure. It's going to take some work to turn them around, but that's what they look like. They are just now starting to turn around. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour view. 
So our price was sitting right on top of the 200 here. Then she launched. She was bouncing off of the 50. She hit that high right up underneath this resistance of 0 0.024. Bad news pushed her all the way down to that triple zero nine, and she's bounced off that bubble, gotten on top of the nine. You can't climb till you're on top of the nine. Look at the size of that bar compared to the size of these bars. That's excitement. She shot herself up over the 20, fell back to the 20, and now is sitting on top of the nine, which is floating well over the 20. The rest of the other SMAs are a mess right now. She's got a work cut out for her, but it looks like she's taking it in hand. Now, our oscillators don't look that bad. Our MACD is climbing up. It's about ready to cross the signal line. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is about ready to cross its line, and that's going to give us some more strength. Our RSI is a bit cool. That is still down at 45, and it's actually pushing down right now because of that red bar right there. But I am inspired. There's a pattern here that gives me hope. You see this hourglass right here between that blue line and that red line? This red line is my ADX. I like to call it trend continuation. Whenever you see a straight line, that tells you whatever trend is on your chart is continuing. It doesn't matter if this line is up, down, or sideways, just if it's straight. So go straight up from where this line stopped falling and started going up. You can see that is exactly where she started to fall. And where she stopped falling, the line changed. I love this. So here it is, folks. When you see that PPO on the top, which is where I put that oscillator and my ADX underneath so I can see this pattern, when you see those two coming to a point, getting closer and closer, guaranteed your price is falling. When you see the PPO going up and the ADX going down and they start spreading apart, guaranteed your price is going up. In other words, once these start spreading, if either one of those lines changes direction, you're not in an uptrend anymore. It may not be falling, but it's not climbing. Taking a look at that five day, five minute. Big drop here from about 2.1 cents down to that triple zero nine. Just accumulation here going sideways. A little bit of a jump up onto the 50, started pushing towards the 200. And again, you see, once she got close to the 200 and it was flat, right? It's not falling anymore. It's leveled out. She got excited. Pew! She shot up there, came back, and now she's landed on her 50, which is what she rides up. This is looking nice, folks. And our 200 is now starting to turn up. Our oscillators are not happy. Our oscillators are all going the wrong direction. Our ADX and our PPO are actually coming together right now. Our MACD has had a crossover and is pushing down the signal line. And our RSI is chilly down at 44. Bah, humbug. I think there's a lot of people that got their eyes on this stock. And I think they were disappointed because of the last deal falling through. And this one just plugged that hole so quick that we're not going to lose much water. Yeah, the price did fall. But I think she's going to come back. So we've got some resistances here I've drawn up. Right now we're at 005. I found one here at 008. We've got one here lower. There is one here just over the penny mark. But we've got another one way up here at 1.6. So I like Ulinks just because she's got a following. I'm not real crazy about the news. It's not real informative, but I like stocks that bounce. And this thing looks like it's ready to bounce. YCRM. Let's get ready for the ride. I got our next stock locked and loaded. This is STAL, Star Alliance International. Now, we have looked at Stahl a few times, but we've got to look at it again. She's ready to break out. She's got an atypical breakout chart with volume that has been building up for a month and is just huge right now. And her catalysts, she's got a lot of them. Just none of them are current. Not in the last couple of weeks. There's been no new news presses or filings. However, she's had a lot of big news in the last six weeks that have built up a lot of momentum. And I think it's going to carry on and it's going to break her out and she's going to run. So Star Alliance finished the day at 0 0.0039 with about 44.5% gains today. She too is on the pink tier. She's current, but she's only got one of those green ticks we're always talking about. The transfer agent verified. We would like to see the verified profile here sooner rather than later. So what does this company do? Well, they give us some information here about some of what they're doing, but 
They are doing more now, and you'll get that information when we look at the news. Star Alliance International is a global holdings company with strong assets in the United States, Honduras, Guatemala, and Nigeria. Star's assets include gold mines in California and Honduras with gold and lithium mines in Nigeria. And this is their primary focus is the mines, but they are doing a lot more for shareholder value. In addition, Star searches out innovative new technologies that are eco-friendly, including our new mining technology for the extraction of gold that has been invented, designed, and built in Guatemala that we plan to market to gold miners. Truth of the matter is, they're already doing that. It's called Genesis. And this can take coal, raw ore, whatever you got, you put it in there, and it will pull out 98% of the gold that's in all of that stuff. And they got a company called Lineworks that they made a deal with that's taken over that aspect of their business, and they're approaching these mining companies selling this product. They also have a second patented product called Baratex Technology. They bought the patent and all the assets from the company back in 2022. This is interesting. Baratex is our fibers manufactured from volcanic rock that are incredibly light, stronger than steel, wood, carbon fiber, fiberglass, aluminum, even stronger than Kevlar. And check this out. They're all biodegradable. They're made from volcanic rock and they're biodegradable. The product can be used in many everyday applications. And as I said, they are doing more, but we'll get to that information when we look at the news. So let's take a look at that relative volume. Huge jump. Went from about 20.5 million to almost 110 million today. Share structure for stall. Well, they've got 500 million authorized and 471 million on the market. Of that 471, insiders own 167 million. And if all that math is correct, that leaves us with a float of about 300 million. Now, when you have that many shares out, what I mean is they've virtually got all the shares they own on the market. They're starting to become diluted. They're not going to have anything to work with. If they needed cash, they couldn't put them on the market and do a public offering. And they don't have enough shares to make a deal with other companies, right? They can use their shares as currency. And currently, the market cap for the company is $1.2 million. Looking at the financials for Stahl, we have nothing coming in annually. We have nothing coming in quarterly. The news is a big deal because it puts money on the table immediately. Checking out their balance sheet. Well, they've got $4,000 in the bank. Don't forget those three zeros. Whew, thank God. Assets, $994,000. And liabilities, $2.1 million, which means we're holding debt. Stockholder equity is minus $1.2 million. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got two 8Ks over here. One of those 8Ks is about a new deal, which I'm going to share with you when we look at the news. And the other 8K is about them getting a new public accountant. So let's jump on over into that news now. So they don't give us a lot of news here, and I'm only working with what's current. But it is important news. All of this news is important. I've gone back to September 26th. Star Alliance agrees to purchase AI English OTG. We're going to look at that one. Star Alliance agrees extension with Lionworks and Comsa. What this basically is, is that they need more time to get things together at this mining operation. Lionworks is selling them the Genesis. They are setting up the Genesis at this mine and they need to get some more financing. And they're working on that right now. And the other big piece of news that we're going to dive into, the company agrees to purchase 51% of DigiPro Payments, also known as Net Simple. Now, these are two separate businesses they have just now jumped into. This piece of news came out September 27th. Star Alliance has agreed to acquire 51% of AI English OTG. Star Alliance is proud to announce that it has opened an IT division specializing in artificial intelligence technologies and fintech programs. AI English OTG is Star's first AI technology company bringing in its revolutionary AI technology for learning the English language across the globe. 
The global market size for English language instruction is currently about $60 billion a year and is estimated to grow to almost $200 billion in five years. This revolutionary technology is both unique and way ahead of any other English learning program. I have spent 22 years in this industry and right now I see the biggest market shift we have ever seen in history as the CEO of the company. Our AI for learning the English language is fully developed and ready for viral sharing across 48 Asian countries and 21 Latin American countries beginning in Q4 2023. That's right now, folks. The AI is engineered to be scalable across the entire globe and provides native language translation in 60 plus languages and attacks the global market and its 3 billion people trying to learn English. That other piece of news came out October 4th. The company agrees to purchase 51% of DigiPro payments, also known as NetSimple. They tell us here that NetSimple is a fintech and merchant service provider company with a proven track record. Over the last 10 years of continuous strategic technology development and technical marketing testing prior to the launch of their brand. NetSimple uses proprietary software as a service platform that enables publishers to create and manage market websites, shopping carts, digital web content with fully integrated online, in-person, or brick and mortar payment processing. Now here's the good part. NetSimple has revenue this year through September 2023 of $700,000 and growing monthly with a current run rate in excess of $100,000 and is profitable. With this acquisition, revenue is expected to more than double over the next six months. <laughs> I gotta laugh. They've got no revenues. If we double their revenues, they're still at zero. So I'm not quite sure what they mean by that unless they are telling us that this company is expecting to double their revenues, which would put them at 1.5 million. This is an exciting acquisition for Star. It brings revenue and profit immediately as well as an exciting plan for growth. This does not in any way change our core business of mining and mining technology. However, with our available asset base, we intend to continue to look for undervalued assets that will drive shareholder value. Now, they made one other deal that isn't in a news press, but it was in a filing. This filing came out, I believe it was November 7th. They signed a memorandum of understanding with Knightsbridge Group. They tell us down here that Knightsbridge will assist Stahl in identifying and tapping into new investor markets in Asia. Knightsbridge will develop and issue a DGC digital gold coin backed by Stahl's gold assets. Knightsbridge will work with Stahl to explore additional opportunities related to digital assets, equity, and derivatives. So now they're getting into <laughs> digital coins. They're going to use their gold and create a digital coin and have it backing that coin. So they've got a lot of different things they're doing now. AI with teaching people to speak English, that is going to take off right now. The net simple is bringing in money right now. They have the Genesis, which is being marketed. Haven't heard a lot about barrel tax, but Things are happening and the chart is hot. That's why we're looking at it in the first place. Let's go take a look at what a hot chart looks like. Whew. Holy cow, that's a lot of heat. This is Stahl, ticker S-T-A-L, Star Alliance. We're looking at a four hour, six month chart. Six months ago, the high was just over three cents and we hit a low of triple zero eight at the end of September. Now let's just zoom in here. You can see the volume has been growing and it has been growing faster and faster and it is getting very strong right now. Now the last time we looked at this company was back on the 4th of October. It was roughly 002 at the time and she has not come up until these last couple of days. So if you looked at it with me back then, we're just now getting into profit. She did fall down to this low here. You can see she scraped across that bottom, never got below it, and now she is turning up and she is starting to climb. 
Our first strong resistance is right here at 0043 and we're at 0039. Our next strong resistance is up there at 006. So she's approaching that 200 day SMA with a lot of volume pushing her. Here comes our 200 haul. It is also turning up right now. Oscillators are very strong. Every single one of them is pushing up. Now, the only thing I don't like about this chart is that our 200 is still in a decline. We haven't got any leveling off. I would really like to see it level off. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour view. So there's our low bubble at 0008. She is just skidding across this low support here. Bounced off it when the 200 started to get flat, right? It was coming down and right in this area, it started to get flat. So she bounced up there. She still couldn't hold it. Tried again and this time she's had to test it a few times and rip. There she goes. For the last two days, she's been climbing, jumping from 0013 up to 004. That's 300% gains, folks. 300%. She has pulled back and right now she's at 0039 on top of her nine day SMA. And look at all of our other SMAs. Beautiful. They're all in the right places. The biggest on the bottoms, the lightest on the top, and they're evenly combed and spread out. Looking very nice. Our osculators, all of them are still going to the moon. Our RSI is at 74. MACD is pressing up without any challenges, just like our PPO and well, our ADX says our trend isn't changing. That looks sweet. Coming down to that five day, five minute. That's a perfect chart. You got your low bubble in this corner and high bubble in that corner. That's what we want to see. We are here at 0011 and that high of 0041. She jumped up onto her 50, ignoring the new 200 day SMA. Well, she didn't totally ignore it, did she? It just came into the picture here. She gave it one tap. How you doing? Good to see you here. Got things to do. See ya. And she's gone. And she's given all of her attention to the 50. When she starts to fall, it is the 50 that holds her up. But she is floating on that nine day SMA nicely. She is climbing. Every SMA is in its right place. Osculators, uh, all right, they're not bad. Our PPO is calm going sideways. Our MACD is climbing. Our RSI is climbing. And our uh, ADX is pushing down with our PPO slightly going up. So things do look good. And look at that 200 day SMA. She is on an uptrend now for sure. I'm liking Stahl, folks. She's got a lot of things she's doing now, just more than we can keep up with. None of it's current, but it's all going to be bringing in revenues for her, which is what she needs. She had zero revenues. Without revenues, you're not worth anything. And right now we're carrying debt. So when she starts bringing in revenues, she's really probably going to start moving. But right now, right now she is moving. And I want you to take a second look before I go away. Look at that, folks. That is a perfect atypical breakout chart. She has scooted right across the bottom, turning up, bars are getting bigger, approaching that 200 with all that volume pushing her, a tsunami, a tsunami of water right behind her. Come on, folks, put STAL on your watch list. You know you want to. Next stock we're looking at comes from the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. This is, wow, ticker WOW. Wide Open West. This is a broadband internet service provider, terrestrial style. That means they're not using satellites. It's what we're used to. Lines on telephone poles are buried in the ground. And this company is working in the Midwest and the Southeast, and they've been around for a while, and they've got strong revenues, and they are steady. Well, they just came out with their financials a couple of days ago, and they were pretty decent, except for one thing, they missed something just a little, I mean, really just a little, and the investors were not happy about it at all. Taking a look at a chart here, so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. You can see she has been at a steady area here between about 750 and 825. Well, she was at $7.75 just before they announced their financials, and it fell all the way down here to $2.90. And it's not worth it, folks. It was overkill, over the top. There is money now sitting on the table for us. At least that's the way I see it. 
after I share my information with you. Let's see what you think. And as you can see, she is on a bounce back right now. She finished today at $3.79 and she did climb today about 20%. And though it says no tier over here, she's on the New York Stock Exchange where you're going to be able to trade this for free. No transaction fees or major exchange stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, after-market as well. Sure you can. You don't need any special permission or special qualifications. Just get in there and trade. What you got to remember though, it's not a day trade. It's an extended hours trade. So you've got to get EXT in the time period. Change day to day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. Without extension in there, your order won't even be seen. So what was the relative volume around? Wow, today. Wow, we've got about 300% increase, jumping from 411,000 up to 1.6 million. Share structure for, wow. <laughs> All they tell us is the outstanding share count. That's about 84 million. Our float could be that high, but it could be considerably less too. Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap is pretty decent for this company. We're at about 264 million. Taking a look at the financials for the company, they're pretty steady. With this sort of business being a provider for internet, you have household consumers that use it every month. They don't want to get rid of it unless they move or something. So you don't get a lot of fluctuation in your revenues. You build and expand and you keep building on it, but pretty much it stays the same. And that's what we see here. Back in 2019, we were at 727 million, jumped up to 730. And over the last two years, she has fallen down to 704 million at the end of 2022, but they got to keep a lot of profit, 377 million. Looking at her quarterlies, year ago, she was at 176 million. Right now we're at 172 million. In between, we had a high of 180 million. So as I said, there's not a lot of fluctuation. Now let's take a look at their financials since it really relates to this and I'm going to need to bounce back and forth. So this is what they tell us. Their third quarter 2023 results. Now they've got a lot of different divisions and right off the top they're bragging one of their divisions, high speed data revenues increased 7% from the same period last year to a record of 109 million. So one of their divisions did really good. Well, they got a lot of divisions and each one has done this and that and most of them look pretty decent. But where'd the problem come in? Right here. Total revenues for Q3 was 173.1 million for the quarter ended September 30th, 2023. Down just a little over a half a million, 0.6 million compared to the same period a year ago. Really? Okay, so let's take a look. So we are talking September. They did 171 million now. They did 173 million there. Am I getting that number right or was it 173? 173. So they were only 0.6 million down. Now they are up. This, this last financial is up over this quarter. We're at 173.1 million. That is higher by a half a million. But because we didn't cut it here, we're not higher than this one. Everybody is upset. Does any of this make sense to you? It doesn't to me. We are talking $172 million and you're worried about 0.6 million? We fluctuate that from quarter to quarter. Here is a 7 million fluctuation and we dropped 8 million right there. And they're worried about a half a million dollar difference between September of this year and September of last year. I think it's stupid. I think it's an opportunity. Take a look at their balance sheet. They got money in the bank, 23 million. Look at those assets, 1.6 billion. Total liabilities is in the billions too, 1.2 billion which leaves us positive shareholder equity of 400 million. So it's not as bad as it looked right there. Disclosures for the company. We've got a form four here. I don't think I looked at this one. Let's see what it is. It is a sale. That's right, I did. It's funny, you're gonna see in the news that they declared that the C 
T.O. sold 4,000 shares at $7.50. Well, big deal. He sold 4,000 shares out of just under 200,000 shares. The guy needed some money. Maybe he's going on vacation. Maybe he's got an operation. Who knows? But 4,000 out of 200,000 shares is no big deal. And you got the most recent financial here. And we do have an 8K here. Let's see what this 8K says. Uh, oh, financial results. Absolutely. So let's go take a look at that news now. Where we got it. <laughs> I know I got news here somewhere. There it is. So I have gone back to September 7th here. They are telling us that they are expanding their business. Their revenues are steady. They are moving high or low. They're just right there. But now they're expanding business, which means their revenues are going to start to grow. Are we still going to cry about $0.6 million? In September, they say that the All Fiber Network is going to be going to several new Michigan communities. That's my state. And I've never heard of WOW. Here's another piece in September. WOW adds Minnesota communities to plans for expanding its All Fiber Network. WOW continues expansion momentum with plans to build All Fiber Networks in Hernando County, Florida. And then all the way up here, Wide Open West CTO discloses sale of 4,000 shares. Well, it's the law. He has to disclose it. Don't make it sound like he's doing something special for us or it was a secret he just let out. No, it's the law. That's why Form 4s were invented. And it was no big deal, 4,000 shares. So the company is expanding. They have steady revenues. Nothing bad has gone on. Those financials were good. They just didn't beat last year's revenues. They fell by 0.6 million, but they did beat last quarter's revenues. Come on, folks. Let's get with it. Let's go take a look at this chart. Wow, what a fall. <laughs> this is ticker WOW. Wow. This is Wide Open West. And we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. It was back in May. We had an impressive high of $11.75. She hit this just before she came out with her financials. And they weren't happy about those either. She dropped from this high of $11.75 down to about $7.75. Which is where, if you look across the board, she's at right now. If I line that up, you can see that's right where she's at. She has just been going sideways with a blip here and there, but not doing much of anything. And what's really disappointing is right here. Our 200-day SMA got flat enough for a breakout attempt, and she never even tried it. Didn't even try. And now we've got a new financial that came out. It was pretty darn good. 0.6 million. And it fell from $7.62 all the way down to $2.81. Now, right now, she is bouncing off of that. All that volume was in selling, but now it's coming in for the buying. She has put herself on top of the nine-day SMA. Now, there's a long ways to go before she hits any of the other SMA, so I don't expect her to run all the way to them. I expect her to climb maybe slowly, waiting for these stronger SMAs to come down to her. And when they get close, then she'll hop and skip on top of them. Now, let's grab my Fibonacci here. Fibonacci's are great to get yourself some supports and resistances when you don't have them, really. Poke the top and the bottom of your run or your drop. And you've got supports and resistances you can actually trade on. They will respect these, believe it or not. What we are looking at is the middle. This is the perfect average. Anytime you take the center of something, it's a perfect average. And that's what charts use. Averages. Millions of them. Well, this perfect average is where that price is inclined to push towards right now. And that is up there at about $5.20. $5.17. So she's going to try to work up to that. And that's what we're going to look for. Let's get down to that 20-day, one-hour view. So she's been underneath the 200, pulled away a little bit, and then jumped up, hitting that high, and then tumbling down to this low. Off of that low, she's put herself over top of the 20-day SMA. Here comes our 200 haul and our 50-day getting close. She has been climbing steady. I believe she'll jump on over those. 200 is way up there, so she's going to take her time climbing once she gets on top of these. That's the way I see it. She'll probably do a lot of bouncing on top of the 50. 
we've still got great setup on our oscillators. You can see our hourglass here. We still have our spread on our PPO and our ADX. MACD is crossing the signal line right now, and our RSI is warmed up to 58. Taking a look at that five day, five minute. That's a scary drop right there. She was going sideways, hit that 788, and then dropped hitting this floor. And there's our 200 on the five minute chart. And you can see once she got near it, that's what she wanted to do. And I think she's going to do that with every SMA. She's going to look for opportunity to jump on these once they get close enough. She's got it on top of the 200 and now she's jumped under a 50 and she's riding that all the way up. And we are just underneath this one at $3.90. Once she gets on top, she'll probably bounce on top of this for a little bit come up underneath here and hit her head and she'll pull back before she jumps on top and that's the routine you bounce on the floor until you can get high enough to hit your head on the ceiling hit your head on the ceiling a couple times and get on top of the floor and jump on top and you do that all the way up until you get a surge and just run through three of them i am liking wow I think the chart is set up. There is more information to know about her, but you can see she's got steady revenues and she's expanding. So we're expecting her revenues to expand as well. But it isn't going to hurt you to go check up some more information, not only on this one, but the other two as well. I'm liking all three of them, but it's not my money. It's your money. I've given you reason to consider them. Now give yourself cause to invest. Do some more DD. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.